Yes. Nine yes, seven no, and two not voting for the record. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to the uh, next agenda item, the OST Education Committee. Go ahead, Chair. Thank you. Resolution of the Gala Sioux Tribal Council of the Gala Sioux Tribe appointing Kateri Weston as the committee program monitor for the Education Committee of the Gala Sioux Tribal Council. Whereas the Gala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 4 and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie, Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Gulf Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gulf Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pioneer Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas in the exercise of these powers, the Tribal Council enacted the Oglala Sioux Tribe Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual by Ordinance Number 18-22 on August 16, 2018. And since that time, the Tribal Council has enacted ordinances amending the manual. And whereas the Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 21-13 to amend the personnel manual to replace the administrative officers in the office of the Chief of Staff with committee program monitors under the standing committees of the Tribal Council and to establish procedures for the selection, removal, responsibilities, and reporting of the committee program monitors. And whereas the personnel manual section 4-16 provides in relevant part that each committee program monitor is a political appointee that serves at will. Each committee program monitor shall be recommended by the standing committee to which the program to which the committee program monitor is assigned and appointed by majority vote of the tribal council for the same term as the appointing tribal council. And whereas on May 16, 2023, by motion and vote, the education committee of the tribal council recommended that Kateri Weston be appointed to serve as the committee program monitor for the education committee. And whereas the tribal council agrees with the recommendation of the education committee now, therefore, be resolved that the Gulf Sioux Tribal Council hereby appoints Kateri Weston to serve as the committee program monitor for the Education Committee of the Tribal Council, subject to successful completion of a background check and drug testing requirements that are applicable to all political appointees under Chapters 11, 11A, and 12, and Section 34-3B of the Personnel Manual, as amended by Ordinance Number 21-06 and be a further resolve that Ms. Weston shall be a political appointee of the tribe who shall serve at will and whose term of office shall be for the term of office of the appointing tribal council, namely the term of office of the 2022-2024 Star Comes Out Musso administration, and be a further resolve that Ms. Weston shall be subject to the day-to-day -day oversight of the tribal controller, the supervision and oversight of the education committee of the tribal council, and the ultimate disciplinary authority of the Tribal Council pursuant to Section 4-16 of the Personnel Manual as amended by Ordinance Number 21-13. Motion to approve. Okay, motion by Councilman Jumpin' Eagle, second by Councilman Watkins. Call for the vote. Okay. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Meeks? Yes. Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Oh. Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. 
Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Not voting. David Puyer. Donna Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Ah. Jackie Sears. Oh, uh huh. John Steele Sr. Yes. Garfield Little Dog. Craig Dillon. Yes. Fourteen yes, four not voting. Motion passed. Okay. Uh, resolution of the Gloucester Tribal Council clarifying and amending resolution twenty three dash forty five of the Gloucester Tribe to clarify and affirm the duties and authorities of the interim school board of Pahinsite, Owaiwa. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article Four. Article 6, and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. <clears throat> and whereas the Gloucester Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3, of the tribal constitution, the Gulf Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1M, 1O, 1T, and 1W of the tribal constitution empower the tribal council to manage the economic affairs and enterprises of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting to charter subordinate organizations and to regulate the activities of the associations thus chartered by the tribal council to review any action taken by subordinate boards and promoting the health and welfare of the tribe and its members and whereas the lawsuit tribal council passed resolution number 23-45 on february 28 2023 pursuant to which the tribal council suspended the board of pahinsinte Owaiwa and appointed, and appointed an interim board for the duration of the investigation and any necessary period required by the outcome of the investigation and suspend without pay the principal and curriculum director, director for the duration of the investigation and any necessary period required based on the outcome of the investigation. And whereas the Bureau of Indian Education, BIE, is scheduled to complete a, a review that has not yet been completed at this time, but there is a present need to clarify the authority of the interim board regarding personnel authority. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Gloucester Tribal Council hereby affirms that the interim board has the authority to non-renew any and all employment positions, including the position of principal pending the BIE review, but does not have authority to renew the principal contract at this time. And be it further resolved, the interim board has the full authority to make all decisions regarding establishment and abolishment of personnel positions and all other authorities granted to the Pahinsinte Owaiwa to the board pursuant to the school charter bylaws and policies, including the authority to approve and recommend amended policies to the Ogala Sioux Tribe Education Committee for their approval. And be it further resolved that the reinstatement of or election of a new school board is solely vested in the Oglalsu Tribal Council and not with the interim board at this time. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Jumpin Eagles, second by Councilman Lunderman. Go ahead, you have a question. So I just wanted to get some clarification on the resolution. Um, on the therefore be it resolved, it has the interim board has authority to non-renew any and all employment positions, but does not have the authority to renew the contract. Can I get clarification on that? And then also, does it conflict with the interim board has full authority to make all the decisions? 
Is Georgia on, Chairman? Georgia, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Um, so the, the basis for this um, in terms of, okay, so there were two questions. They were concerned, um, the interim board was concerned they did not want to go around um, the current suspension. And so that's why they only have authority to non-renew if that's the direction they go. Um, and additionally, um, that although they had, we don't believe it conflicts with the ability to take all actions, they just wanted to make sure they did not conflict with your current suspension. And so that's what this is to clarify. Did I answer your question? No, not really. Um, unless okay. I'm just not understanding it. Because in the resolution, it says they have the authority to non-renew any and all positions, but does not have authority to renew the contracts. And then it's the next sentence that says the interim board has the full authority to make all decisions. Okay. So the, oh, okay. All right. I see. I think I understand what you're asking. Sorry, I misunderstood your question. Let me pull up that resolution. Um, Sorry, just trying to make sure I can be looking at the same language you're looking at. All right. All right, so on that, um, be it further resolved, the interim board has the full authority to make all decisions regarding the establishment and abolishment of personnel positions. So it's a separate authority as well as to work on the charter bylaws and policies. So they the, the first, therefore, again, they just wanted to make sure it was limited so that they did not conflict with your previous um, your previous resolution suspending. So they do not conflict because it's a, a separate authority there that would not conflict with your suspension. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And then um, the last question I has, it says, be it further resolved that the reinstatement of or election of a new school board is solely vested in OST Tribal Council. So does that mean that Tribal Council need to take an action to do an election for the school board? Correct. When do we do the action? Goes through committee first. Anna, are you on Ed Committee or no? No? Okay. Okay, so did that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> now, moment of silence there. Oh. Okay. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Inks. Yep. 
Carl Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. <clears throat> yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Don Ray Gospar. Yes. Sonia Little Hot Weston. Abstain. Jackie Sears. Yeah. John Steele Sr. Yes. Garfield Little Dog. Craig Dillon. Yes. Fourteen, yes. One, no. One, abstain. Two, not voting. Motion carried. I think, uh, Chairman, that's it for education that I think I'm also the vice chair of finance, too. But I think I'm handling that one also. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll that, that was everything for education then, uh, Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next line item. Go ahead. The first one is a resolution of the Gulf Street Tribal Council of Gulf Street Tribe in support of submitting a Tiwahe initiative funding proposal to the BIA to de develop a Tiwahe plan. Whereas the Gulfstream Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 6 and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Gulfstream Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gulalasu Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, sections 1F, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Gulalasu Tribe and its membership. And whereas the Ogala Sioux Tribe is eligible for a one-time non-reoccurring funding opportunity in the amount of $100,000 through the BIA Tiwahe program. And whereas this is a de demonstration project that the U.S. Congress will have to fund in the future and sharing certain information from the project will improve the likelihood of continued funding. And whereas the Tiwahe Initiative provides tribes with funding to implement cultural programming to improve the well-being of the tribal communities. And whereas the OST Finance Committee has reviewed the options for use of the funding and recommends the submission of a proposal to develop a Tiwahe plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gulfstream Tribal Council does hereby approve the submission of a proposal to develop a Tiwahe plan and be it further resolved that the Gulfstream Tribe commits to fulfilling certain obligations in implementing the funding to ensure the success of the Tiwahe Initiative and be a further resolved that the Oglala Tribe commits to providing the BIA with a budget and other requested programming data to provide information on, on the success of the Tiwahe Initiative. And be a further resolved that Oglala Sioux Tribe will consider public release of information from the Tiwahe Initiative project. And be it finally resolved that the tribal president or in his absence, the vice president, is hereby authorized to sign any documents necessary to if effectuate the proposal motion to approve second motion by councilman jumping eagle second by councilwoman whitehorse call for the vote wesley hawkins senior oh 
Jim Meeks. Yep. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Donor Gospar. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Uh -huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, uh ha. -huh. John Steele Sr. Garfield Little Dog. Craig Dillon. Yes. Seventeen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Okay, the next one is the ordinance of the Glow Street Tribal Council of the Glow Street Tribe amending the rental rates for tribal properties to a negotiated rate. Whereas the Glow Street Tribe has is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the US Constitution, Article Six, and is a signatory to the treaty. Of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 stat 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 stat 635, and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Glossy Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Glossy Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe and to and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Gualasu tribe and its membership. And whereas the Gualasu tribe has tribal space available to rent to various parties and entities, including but not limited to private businesses, nonprofits, and federal agencies. And whereas OST has previously a rental rate in ordinance number 06-04 and updated by 07-06 and whereas on May 25th 2023 the OST Finance Committee reviewed the previous rate that has not been updated since 2007 pursuant to ordinance number 07-06 and determined that a set rate of seven dollars per square foot per year is no longer reasonable and whereas on April 7th 2023 the OST Finance Committee reviewed the need to set an updated rental rate for available Ogala Sioux tribal space and recommends that the rate be no negotiated based on the condition of the space and intended use. Now, therefore, be it ordained, Ogala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby approve the rental rate for available space to rent to private businesses, nonprofits, and federal agencies shall be negotiated through the OST property and supply director based on considerations of fair market value and intended use and be it further or ordained that any rate negotiated through ost property and supply for rental rates for tribal buildings pursuant to the authority granted in this ordinance is subject to final approval of the emb eb and d standing committee and be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect june 6 2023 and shall supersede repeal and replace all prior inconsistent laws of the ogala Sioux tribe motion to approve Okay, motion by Councilman Jumpin Eagle, second by Councilman Puyer. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Carl Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. No. Robin Tapio. No. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Donor Gospar? Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston? Ha. Uh. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. 
John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Fifteen yes, two not voting. Motion passed. Two no, I'm sorry. Correction, two no. Motion passed. Yeah, hang on, Jeremy. Find this other one. Zero six. Resident, a resolution of the Tribal Council of the Guadalupe Sioux Tribe supporting an exemption for the tribal governments from the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act's applicable large employer mandate. Whereas the Guadalupe Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 6 and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, one stat 749 and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868-15 Stat 635 and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Glossu Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Glossu Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1A, of the Constitutional Oglawa Sioux Tribe authorizes the Oglawa Sioux Tribe Council to negotiate with the federal, state, and local governments on behalf of the tribe. Article 4, Section 1F authorizes the Oglawa Sioux Tribe Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglawa Sioux Tribe. And Article 4, Section 1W authorizes the Oglawa Sioux Tribe Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglawa Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas the United States of America enacted the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act in, in 2010, Public Law Number 111-148, Affordable Care Act is a comprehensive health care reform law that, among other provisions, mandated that employers with 50 or more full-time employees offer health insurance to their employees, 26 U.S.C. subsection 59 80H. And whereas this large employer mandate has also been applied to tribal employers with 50 or more employees. Northern Arapaho Tribe versus Bur Burwell 118 F SUPP 3D 1264. And whereas while the Department of Treasury initially concluded that it could not issue such an exemption for tribal governments from the employer mandate for tribal member employees, the Legal landscape has since changed when in 2021, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals held in Rosebud Sioux Tribe versus the United States, 9F, 4th, 1018, Eighth Circuit, 2021, that the tribal signatories to the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868 had a treaty and statutory right to health care from the United States at no cost to them or their Treasury's continued application of the employer mandate is creating a significant financial hardship for the tribes. And whereas the Finance Committee of the Gallows Tribe has reviewed this matter and believes that the supporting an exemption for tribal governments from the employer mandate would be in the best interest of Indian country. And whereas the Tribal Council of the Gallows Tribe agrees with the Finance Committee. Now, therefore, it be resolved the Tribal Council of the Gallows Tribe hereby supports an exemption for tribal governments from the pay Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act's applicable large employer mandate. And be it further resolved, the Tribal Council of the Gallows Tribe requests the Department of Treasury Tribal Advisory Committee to request that Treasury to exempt tribal governments from the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act's applicable larger employer mandate. The Tribal Council of the Gallows Tribe calls upon the Department of the Treasury to exempt tribal governments from the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act's applicable large employer mandate. Motion to approve. Okay, you got a motion by Councilman Jeffrey. Second. Did I get a second? Yes, yeah, second. Okay, I, sorry, I didn't hear you. Second by Councilwoman Whitehorse. 
Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Minks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lenderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Donna Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha! Jackie Sears. Oh, ha. Huh. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Okay, we have 17 unanimous. Motion passed. Chairman? Yes. Is it possible to get that by Friday because our agenda deadline is Friday for TTAC? To have a signed copy sent so we can forward it on to the organizer? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yes, that's possible. Okay. <clears throat> Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council, Oglala Sioux Tribe, amending the Oglala Sioux Tribe's personnel policies and procedures manual ordinance number 18-22 concerning vehicle accident reporting. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, and is signature to the Treaty of Fort Leonard, 1851, <laughs> And the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868-15-635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Gulf Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Organization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gulf Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. Whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Glossu tribe and its membership. And whereas the Tribal Council has amended the manual through various ordinances, and whereas on May 25, 2023, the Finance Committee of the Tribal Council met and recommends approval of the foregoing amendments to the manual concerning the reporting of property damage to operation of tribal vehicles. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Glossu Tribal Council does hereby amend section 12-12 of the Glossu Tribe Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual Ordinance Number 18-22 as amended, which shall read as follows. Alcohol and A, alcohol and drug tests will be conducted as soon as practicable after an employee is involved in an, in an incident that jeopardizes the safety of himself or herself, customers, coworkers, or the general public. B, alcohol tests will be performed within eight hours of the incident. C, drug tests will be performed within 24 hours of the incident. D, failure to report for testing within the time frames in subsections B and C will be treated as a positive test result. Failure to report due to medical reasons shall be considered. E, failure to report an incident causing damage to tribal property within 24 hours to the property and supply department and the immediate supervisor shall be caused for disciplinary action. F, directors or immediate supervisors have a responsibility to ensure that employees report incidents and submit to required testing within the time frames in subsections B and C and failure to do so will be cause for disciplinary action. G, testing requirements for employees under this paragraph may be fulfilled by property, by properly administered tests conducted by federal, state, and or tribal law enforcement officials, as long as the test results are provided to the tribe. 
and be a further ordained that the Glossu Tribal Council does hereby amend Section 15-5 of the Glossu Tribal Tribe Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual, Ordinance Number 18-22, as amended by adding the subsections H and I, which shall read as follows: H. All vehicles accidents causing property damage shall be reported immediately to the Chief of Staff, Property and Supply Director, and immediate supervisor, unless the person is unable to is unable to due to injuries that require immediate medical treatment or cause unconsciousness. An injured person shall make the report as soon as practicable. I, if the employee is under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time of the vehicle accident, the employee shall be held personally responsible for the property loss caused by the accident. Further, the person shall be prohibited from operating any tribal vehicles for one year and be further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect June 6, 2023, and shall supersede, repeal, and replace all prior inconsistent laws of the Ogala Sioux Tribe. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilman Jumpin' Eagle. Second by Councilman Sears. Call for the vote. I got a question. Okay, question. Alcohol related, it's eight hours. Drug is 24. They should it be all eight hours in that ordinance? Why are we giving them extra hours if they're under the influence of drugs? It should be immediate. That's a question for you, Ryan. Can we amend that to reflect that? So you want to make an amendment to that policy there? Yeah. Or eight hours to what? They should both be with it immediately, immediately upon re reporting the accident. I don't think we should give them any time, any eight hours or any 24 hours to do whatever. When you're involved in an injury accident, that should happen immediately. Yeah. Yeah, so report it immediately to, to property and supply. Yeah. Stacy, and, um, and to take your drug and alcohol test immediately. Okay. Okay. You for, wanna... for clarification, it'll be C. Drug tests will be performed immediately after the the incident, and then on E, failure to report. <clears throat> an incident. Failure to report incident causing damage to tribal property instead of within 24 hours, we'll take that out and put immediately to the property and supply department. Also B needs to be amended. Yes. Okay. Where it says alcohol tests will be performed immediately. Craig, can you read the ordinance over again with them changes? Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. You're such a good sport about this. Keep it up. Make a motion to suspend you. Okay, so we made a correction to that amendment. If uh, Secretary we could make the read the correction, so we're we'll verify it and call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Senior. No. Jim Inks. Yes. Coral Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yep. Wendell Youngman Jr. Anna Halverson. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. 
Don Regosper? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Uh. Jackie Sears? Oh, uh ha. -huh. John Steele Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon? Yes. Sixteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. <clears throat> Ordinance of Gloucester Street Tribal Council of Gloucester Street Tribe authorizing the OST House Administration Master Health Contract Funding Agreement HHS I 22412019000001 budget modification number five for the American Rescue Plan Act fiscal year 2021 budget. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, and is a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 stat 749, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 stat 635, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Gloucester Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC, subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gloucester Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the OST Health Administration operates under 93-638 Master Health Contract and administering several health programs for the Gallows Tribe, including the Community Health Representative Program, Solid Waste Management, Non-Emergent Transportation Services for Health Care, Health Education, the ear, nose, and throat clinic and serves as the tribe's public health authority in accordance with OST ordinance number 20-35 as amended and is responsible to provide contact tracing, monitoring, and surveillance in response to the spread of the virus that causes COVID-19. And whereas the OST Health Administration has received funding under the American Rescue Plan Act to help prevent, mitigate, and respond to the impact of COVID-19 within the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas the OST Health Administration proposes a budget modification to the fiscal year 2021 ARPA funding to improve services and address the impact of their programs and communities in their COVID-19 response, prevention, and mitigation efforts. And whereas the proposed expenditures are in accordance with 31 CFR Part 35 final rule established under the PL 117-2 American Rescue Plan Act, and whereas the OST Health and, Human Services, Health and Human Services Committee and Finance Committee has reviewed the proposed budget modification number five and recommends approval by the Tribal Council. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Gloucester Tribal Council does hereby approve and authorizes the OST Health Administration Master Health Contract Funding Agreement, HHSI 2412019, 00001 budget modification number five for the American Rescue Plan Act fiscal year 2021 budget. Motion to approve. Motion by Councilman Junk Nego. So I have a second. Second by Councilman Youngman. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Jim Inks. Yes. For a white horse? Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle Sr.? Yes. Howard Rooks? Austin Watkins Sr.? Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr.? Yes. Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Clear? Don Roy Gosper? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha! Jackie Sears? Oh, ha. John Steele Sr.? Craig Dillon? Yes. Sixteen yes, one not voting. Motion passed. 
ordinance of the tribal council of the Gloucester tribe amending the marijuana control ordinance ordinance number 20-66 concerning allocation of revenue whereas the Gloucester tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the united states government pursuant to the u.s constitution article 6 and is a signatory to the treaty of fort laramie of 1851 1 stat 749 and the treaty of fort laramie of 1868 15 stat 635 and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government and whereas the Gallaudet tribe organized under section 16 of the indian reorganization act of 1934 25 usc subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under article 3 of the tribal constitution the Gallaudet tribal council is the governing body of the tribe and whereas Article 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Gloucester Tribe and its membership. And whereas the Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 20-16 to imp implement a comprehensive marijuana control ordinance, including a regulatory structure that directs the allocation of revenue generated by fees collected by the marijuana, by the marijuana commission and whereas on may 25th 2023 the finance committee of the tribal council met and recommends the foregoing amendments to the marijuana control ordinance concerning the allocation of revenue now therefore be ordained that the Gloucester tribal council does hereby amends chapter 10 section 2 of the T marijuana control ordinance Ordinance number 20-66 as amended, which shall read as follows. A, all fees, including licensing and renewal fees collected by the Marijuana Commission will be used by the Marijuana Commission for the purpose of operating under the duties given by this ordinance. B, the funds in excess will come through the OST Treasurer's Office to be expended pursuant to the approval of authority of the Finance Committee and the OST Treasurer's Office in accordance with the requirements of the OST Financial Management Manual. And be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect June 6, 2023, and shall supersede, repeal, and replace all prior inconsistent laws of the Gual Sioux Tribe. Motion to approve. Motion second. by Councilman Jump and Eagle, second by Councilman Puyer. Uh, Councilman Sears. Oh. Okay, okay. We got a question here, and then uh, Councilwoman Sears. Go ahead. Turn your mic on. I had a question on this uh, marijuana uh, ordinance. I have a constituency here that has, been, if I may, turn the mic over to her. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can you translate for her? I'm not translating, Oya. Can you search it? Well, right here. Okay. 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 Yunkaletakuma <laughs> Oh, he, oh, he, oh, What she said in the Lakota language is she wants to know what the tribal council is doing with this marijuana that some of it is shameful to the people, and she wants to know what you guys are doing. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
है ना ओम उन ठीक है आपके की ताकोल she said a long time ago they used marijuana as medicine and it's different today let it let it pataku oh ha oh ha e ha ha kile trokea o trokea ho tu wa mini shicha mini wa kha mini pira she said you're all voting yes 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 to marijuana but first of all she said what about the alcohol that's on the reservation na ko ha ta ko mess ab fentanyl wa ela ka hena shit hena thokya doctor hena tu wa we finish um hetena pat khag energy She said for you to look at those things at whoever is selling them to the people before you look at this marijuana issue. What kind of tick tick a la cash a tick tick um um bana tuk tuk na hena ob ichum hetena. She said the children small children are smoking marijuana now. Ina na we choti lena hena takwa mas e hon kila o kuta hena you have wa postangle okay hena heta we usab ona kuto kherti she said there's people that live and they sell this meth and you know which houses those are Lena da kohen hobo voice speak Lena back hook pops at agni itchum chimshni What she said that the teachings you're afraid of the teachings Wo voice speak Lena isha ikta yana ho ap khustan glog Lena tua cha hnet kha hetena Dukdel it hatcha un hetena una hatima yana doktogna uwichaku apewa elaka She said for you to take your hats off and look at these people that are selling these things to the communities wo wo speki wa khok phaps atagni ichum chimshni she said you operate like you're afraid that you don't want to do anything hena was des ni chat khok ya hena do alle mini pira mini shicha we apreki he ho pat khag energy mi chakena kathi ma ye wi chaye wa ela ka She said those things are dangerous to the people and you should look at all these people that are selling the alcohol to the people and arrest them and put them in jail have them arrested da mes lena ko hena is am patrak energy which akiana katima ye which ape wa elaka she told you to address the meth issue to arrest them and put them in jail too the ones that are selling meth to hold a preji i wag like a honky le want yeah pa kha bi ya pe auto ma to put put aside what you're doing with this marijuana and look at this other issues that are happening with our people wash this ni hena It's not good. Hena ta ko mes e ho ki he. To hal hena un pa ni stuk to gna i chung hena wash a kab. She said when they take meth, well how they take it, whether they smoke it, that they're really strong. To hal chi won ri won lak ki slol yai ktesh ne. 
If you saw one, you wouldn't be able to know. She said these people that are under the influence of meth, if you see them, they keep smoking and smoking one after another. She said their tongue, their jaw, they're always moving. They don't know how to hold it still. My relatives put this marijuana aside. Oh, oh, Bill. Can we have a more shot? We did. Uh, okay. Secretary, can you call for the vote? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got to, I forgot. Uh, go ahead, Council on Sears. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when, when reading this um, ordinance, you know, the excess uh, funds from the sales of the marijuana. Um, it says we're going to follow the financial management manual. So I'm taking that we're going to issue checks when this, you know, if that money is given out to any particular organization or, the, you know, the communities or whatever they see fit, but it's not going to be cash, is it? Because the way, reason I'm saying that is um, in here, it should be noted that we don't deal like that with cash, with just cash. It need, we need to follow the manual where the district, where the tribe issues checks. And if we don't have a bank, I don't know how we're going to get around this right now. So is that something somebody can answer? Because I'm concerned about giving out cash. Yeah, I could answer that. Um, right now we have Bob in the revenue office looking for a bank. Bank West is um, is working with the state cannabis industry to allow for the them to use their bank. Um, so Bob is going to check in to see if, if we can also use that bank. Um, he's also going to check into Native American Bank out of Colorado. Um, because they're not comfortable with doing cash either. I mean, I, I'm not either. That's why I asked him to look into it. Um, because everything needs to be tracked. Everything. From seed to sale and then what happens with the revenue. We can't just go willy-nilly and pass out cash here and there. We need to have a procedure and, and that's why we passed the laws. So that's that's why we put the financial management manual in this ordinance to add into the law. So once a bank is, um, once we Bob finds out what banks will work with us, then we can use that, utilize them. We'll have to come back to council to get approval for an account to put the money over. Okay, thank you for that. Um, you know, I just really want to thank our elder for sitting up here and, and telling us what they see out there. And they're asking council not to focus too much on marijuana issue. There's so much things going on that they see that, you know, we're not showing them what we're doing. I know we're developing task force because the people already know what's going on in their districts. So, you know, with that, we should put these aside, this marijuana stuff now and move forward on dealing with the harsher drugs and alcohol that's killing our people. So um, I hope that maybe we can listen to our elders today. Thank you. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Uh, I abstain. I abstain. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Abstain. David Puyer? Yes. Don Ray Goldsper? Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston? Yeah. Jackie Sears? Yeah. John Steele Sr.? Yes. Craig Dillon? Yes. Eleven yes, three no, two abstain. Motion carried. I need more. Chair. Go ahead, Councilman. Chair. Turn your microphone. There you go. Is it on now? Yes. I have one more constituent here that from the community that would like to uh, address the council. Okay. Good afternoon, council. This is Lena Yellow up Badlin. I'm a member of the tribe, uh, and I'm also from here, Eonas District. Uh, Twyla Turner was just talking about the meth dealers and all those horrible people. Well, two weeks ago, my grandson got attacked by a user who is a minor. He used a machete on my grandson's knees. We called the cops. They came and they act like it was normal. It was a normal thing. I was shocked because he could have put my, you know, amputated my grandson's knees. Instead, these older meth dealers, oh, that's our little bro. We're going to back him up. My son came down from Rapid City for the weekend. Guess what? Those older boys used the bat on his face while he was passed out. They broke his cheekbone and his jaw. All because of the love of men. And today, there's, they all go to this one house that they claim it's on state side. So I said, OK. This is a checkered board situation here. You guys are claiming that state land. No, it's not. It's tribal, but your house is state. That's a checkerboard situation there. I asked the cops to help me arrest them. Nothing was done about it. Not a damn thing. What, are the cops scared of these people? Because I ain't. The next time they attacked my son, I'm gonna go and use the same weapon back on him. Cause I'm a mother. I'm a single mother who raised my kids on my own. And it's my right to protect my children. What's wrong with the cops? We had several gun calls down here. Little teenage boys shooting guns off in the housing. We called the cops, took them the next night to come in. Oh, where at? Come on, guys. You're supposed to protect and serve. Last time I came here, I asked where the empathy was. Nobody told me nothing. Is that what it is? We have no more pride, no more empathy, nothing. We're just on a daily day, you know, survival series here on the reservation. 
and then we get indicted because we only protected ourselves. Something needs to be done about the law enforcement because that meth, those meth users claim that the chief of police calls them before they go down and raid them. What's going on here? We have no love for each other anymore? I don't know. I think we all need to come together to bring back our old traditions where we used to have love, where we used to have empathy, all that for each other. Anymore, we backstab each other, talk about each other, and lie about each other. That's what Tenkashila didn't want. He wanted us all to love each other, to live in harmony, in peace. Yet we give ourselves to chaos. We need to do something about these people, the devil. And I know some of you have a heart of gold. I know how much you want them out of here as much as I do. We're getting destroyed. All our lives we had to fight for our rights as Native Americans. Now we're fighting each other for what right? To show that we're tougher than each other? Uh-uh. No way. I'm uh-uh. I love it. my I don't know what it is about my house, but when people get hurt, they run to my house and they want me to protect them. I'm a single mother. Six kids, and I adopted two more. I was told by Tankashila, these are your kids. You protect them. You feed them. You nurture them. Guess what? They all graduated from high school. And I got two more, two more little ones to go. I don't want to give up. I don't want to put my tribe down. And I don't want them to die. I want them to be proud of this tribe. We came a long way. Why stop now? Because of drugs, because of alcohol. I hate alcohol. Alcohol killed my people. Yet people are sitting there, oh, my mom died, I need a 12 pack. Uh-uh. I came from a strong family. I came from Chief Lip. I came from Wopduga. I ain't gonna let them down just because I wanna be a gang member or a meth user or a drunk. I want my people to stand proud. I'm probably the only last full blood here, but I'm proud of my people, of my tribe. We're the second largest tribe in the US. Why let people down now? What, is it funny because I want to defend myself? I don't think so. I'm so on defense mode because every night I go praying for these kids not to get hurt because of meth. Every morning I get up and I think to Gashila for letting them see another day. One more call down here from meth and these kids are fighting for their lives. Ah. Uh. I don't even know what to think of this tribe anymore. Okay. Uh, are we done with the law and order? Okay, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Okay, so we don't have any anything going on for uh, item line item 10. 11, 11 and 12, so we'll move on to 13. Chair.
Resolution of Gloucester Tribal Council of Gloucester Tribe. Resolution of Gloucester Tribe. <clears throat> Resolution of Gloucester Tribal Council of Gloucester Tribe approving a special election result for a 2023 Pass Creek District Executive Board election. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe adopted its constitution by law by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, according to Section 16 of the Indian Organization Act of 1934, 25 USC. Subsection 51.3 and under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Gloucester Tribal Council is governed body of the Gloucester Tribe, and whereas regular session of Gloucester Tribal Council held on February 28, 2023, the following actions were taken. Motion number 23-52, motion by James Cross, seconded by Austin Watkins to have the Austin Election Commission run a full election for the Creek District following the tribe's election code for a 2022-2024 term of office for the Creek District and Executive Board motion carry 11 yes, six no, zero obtained and two now voting. And motion number 23-55, motion made by James Cross, seconded by Garfield Little Dog, to have those to the Election Commission conduct past Creek District Special Election to work with the Executive Board to send the budget to the Finance for approval as soon as possible. Motion carried, 17 yes, zero no, zero obtained, and two not voting. And whereas on May 2nd, 2023, Special Election was held for past Creek District, President District, Vice President and District Treasurer, and whereas on May 5th, 2023, the OST Election Commission certified the official results of special election held on May 2nd, 2023. Official results of task incorporated by reference herein. Now, therefore, be it further resolved, the Gloucester Tribal Council hereby approves the attached 2023 special election results with the following individuals elected. Pass Creek District President Latrell Plenty Arrows, Pass Creek District Vice President Lydia Bearkiller, Pass Creek District Treasurer Amelia Tallman. And be it further resolved, the Gloucester Travel Council does hereby approve the 2023 special election results all held on May 2nd, 2023. And be it further Resolved that their terms expire at the same time as tribal elections or are conceded with the tribal elections. Motion. Second. Okay, we got a motion by Councilman Watkins, second by Councilwoman Halverson. I had a question. Um, their chair, uh, wouldn't it need district? Was he? Uh, accepted the same way. What's that? Uh, the one that need uh, district chair. Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I know it's Pass Creek, but also I think uh, one that need district chair, the newly elected chair, as Dave Kelly. Or maybe not. John, would be able to answer that? Their district. They do it off the tri uh, district council floor, and Dave Kelly was elected, yes. Yes, yeah. Okay, so we need a resolution from that district then. Okay, just checking. All right. So we got a motion to a second. Uh, secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr.? No. Jim Meeks? Yes. For a White Horse? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr.? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr.? Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr.? Yes. Anna Halverson? Yes. Robin Tapio? Yes. Tyler Lunderman? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Donor Gosper? Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha! Jackie Sears? Oh, uh huh. John Steele Sr.? Yes. 
Craig Dillon? Yes. Sixteen unanimous motion pass. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe proclaiming the fifth day of May as missing and murdered Indigenous women slash girls and persons MMIW, MMIP, National Day of Awareness. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitutional Constitution Article six and is a signatory to the treaty of fort laramie of 1851 one statute 749 september 17 1851 and the treaty of fort laramie of 1868 15th statute 635 april 29 1868 and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government and whereas the oglala sioux tribe organized under section 16 of the indian reorganization act of 1934 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribe is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1W empower the Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its members have been devastated by the abduction and killing of the number of missing and murdered relatives. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council wishes to proclaim the fifth day of May every year as missing and murdered indigenous women and persons day of awareness to bring awareness and remembrance of our missing and murdered relatives. And whereas the OST Law and Order Committee recommends adoption of the proclamation by the Tribal Council. Now, therefore, be it re resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby adopt the following proclamation. Oglala Sioux Tribe Proclamation. Shana Young men afraid of horses, Oglala Lakota went missing at the age of 17. Went missing only to be found brutally murdered recently. May 5th is a day. Hannah Harris, Northern Shinan, was born at the age of 21. She went missing only to be found brutally murdered. This day is known as Missing and Murdered Indigenous Person Awareness Day across America. Research shows that the indigenous people of America are in crisis due to experiencing higher rates of violence and the persistence of cases of missing and murdered persons throughout North America. Like other tribal nations, the Oglala Sioux tribe has been devastated by the loss of its own tribal members, both female and male, who have gone missing or have been murdered where justice and healing has yet to occur due to lack of resources and the need for cooperation of law enforcement entities and communities. The Oglala Sioux Tribe desires to bring awareness to the crisis and to remember our relatives by proclaiming May 5th as Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and, Person and Persons Awareness Day. Now, by the authority vested in the Tribal Council by the people, May 5th is hereby proclaimed the Missing and Murdered Women and Persons Awareness Day certification. Motion. Okay. Okay. Who motioned it? Anna? Okay. Okay, motion by <laughs> sorry, Councilman Watkins, second by Councilman Halverson. Call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Inks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Anna Halverson. Yes. Robin Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Donra Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Jackie Sears. Oh, uh huh. John Steele, Sr. 
Craig Dillon? Yes. 15 yes, one not voting. Motion passed. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Yeah, I'd like to give uh, uh, Darla the floor. Okay. I just want to thank you very much, Tribal Council, for protecting our people. We have women missing. It began with women, and now it's filtering into children. And we just found one of our tribal members in Rapid City. And so you made a landmark case today by also declaring May 5th and also in honor of Shana, young man afraid of his horses, who was only 17. So I thank you as an MMIW advocate. Mitakwe Oyasi. I have one more, uh, okay. Miss Bonnie Holy Rock. Uh, um, thank you for allowing me to speak today. I've been trying to listen to um, council action and quite a bit of it I've completely missed. It was the acoustics are really hard to hear what's going on, but this one, there have been other issues I wanted to address the council on, but this one um, is one that um, I really wanted to, to address. Um, it's good that you have designated May 5th to, as a reminder of the missing and murdered indigenous people we have, um, but why is it? Um, we know the names of Elizabeth Smart. We know the names of Gabby Petito. We know the names of S Serenity Denard, but very few of us know the names of the people from our own reservation. It, for a short period of time, um, they're in the news and people are talking and then it just kind of dies away. So I would challenge the council and challenge um, the Red Skirt Society to take it a step further, to really push to name and have pictures and information of all of the people that are murdered and missing from this tribe. Do we know how many are missing and murdered? Do we know how many total? Do we know how many women? Do we know how many men? Do we know how many children? Do we know what their names are? Do we know what districts they come from? Where are their pictures plastered all over? We've got little stores all over the reservation. I've never seen pictures of all of the missing and murdered people here on those store windows or at the post office. We've got an excellent resource in our radio station. Why aren't we flooding the radio station with um, information, ads, PSAs? Look for this person. They were missing this date. Um, you know, there's families that are hurting and families that are needing answers, and especially people needing to be found, whether it's in a good way or a really horrible way, but they need to be found to give the family some sense of, of having their questions answered. So I'm challenging this council body and the missing and murdered um, groups to take it a step further, to really get that information out there. It's, it's important to do an awareness, but if, if you're aware and then nothing happens, what good is it? 
So do the awareness and then take it that step further. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Councilwoman. No, MMIW is very close to my heart. I had a sister that was murdered while she was pregnant on Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And to date, her murder is still free. Um, the investigation is closed. It needs to be reopened. And that's just one of hundreds of cases on our reservation. A lot of murders are walking away free after they take another life. And that's not right. No, I just recently met a Supreme Court judge. His name was Taylor Bald Eagle. And his daughter's been missing for 30 years. And it's, it's a devastating crime that's happening here. And I'd like to thank all the MMIW groups out there that are advocating our legislators at the Capitol. Every May 5th, they have a MMIW event at the state Capitol for, for this awareness. And the color red that was chosen, it's a sacred color. So I'd like to thank the Tribal Council for passing this. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Chair. Anna, you want to read the next one, please? Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, amending ordinance number 16-25 as amended by ordinance number 20-56, establishing the Oglala Sioux Tribe in-house legal department. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized in accordance with section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC, subsection 476, on December 14, 1935, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws in the Tribal Council as the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1B of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to employ legal counsel for the protection and advancement of the rights of the Glossy Tribe and its members and article four, section one W empowers the tribal council to adopt laws promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas in order to fulfill the, its roles in retaining legal counsel for the advancement and protection of the rights of the tribe and its members, the tribal council wants to create a legal department staffed with in-house attorneys and support staff to reduce the cost of retaining outside legal counsel while maximizing legal services available under a limited tribal budget and centralizing legal services under one department. And whereas the tribal council enacted ordinance number 16-25, August 30th, 2016, as amended by ordinance number 20-56, September 1st, 2020, amending and rescinding ordinance number 14-20, establishing a Oglala Sioux Tribe in-house legal department. And whereas the OST legal department is in need of updates and revisions, and whereas the Law and Order Committee believes that the proposed ordinance will accomplish the objectives of the tribe as set forth above and recommends the Tribal Council the adoption of the proposed ordinance now. Therefore, be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby adopts the following ordinance amending Oglala Sioux Tribe Ordinance number 16-25, as amended by 20-56 with regard to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal Department and shall read in its entirety. Section one, establishment of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal Department. A, there is hereby established a new department to be known as the Oglala Sioux Legal Department, Legal Department. B, the legal department will be under the direct supervision of the Tribal Council and will answer only to the tribal council. Section two, location of legal department. 
The Guala Sioux Legal Department will be based out of the Pine Ridge Agency and offices provided by the Guala Sioux Tribe. Additionally, offices may be established throughout the original territorial boundaries of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation as deemed necessary by the Guala Sioux Tribal Council. Section three, composition of the legal department. A. The legal department will be composed of the following personnel subject to budgeted funds available in necessity. One, three in-house attorneys. Two, one paralegal office manager. Three, one legal secretary. Four, one receptionist, file clerk. Five, interns are needed. B, the office manager will be the direct supervisor of all merit employees in the department. C, the attorney shall be political appointees eligible for all benefits and merit awards made available by the tribal council to regular employees of the tribe and will serve for the two-year term that coincides with the term of the then seated council. D, they will be appointed by the tribal council by way of the resolution and this ordinance shall serve as the scope of work and legal of compensation. E, all personnel of the legal department other than the attorneys will be merit employees and subject to hiring and discipline of the under the tribal personnel policies and procedures, ordinance 18-22 as amended. F, all interns working in the legal department will be approved by the attorneys following submission of the resume, writing sample and references. If the department budget allows, the interns will be paid for their time at a rate approved by council. G, all equipment, office equipment and supplies, including internet connections, legal research, tools, phones, website costs, drug test costs, travel expenses, and other expenses necessary for the operation of the legal department will be provided with budgeted funds available H. Additional personnel may be necessary such as paralegals. Such personnel may be added to the legal department as authorized by the tribal council upon recommendation by the majority of the in-house attorneys. Section four. Preference in hiring for the Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal Department. A, preference in hiring attorneys for the legal department will be as followed once basic qualifications for the positions have been met. One, enrolled tribal members. Two, descendants of tribal members who have pending application for enrollment. Three, enrolled members of other federally recognized tribes. Four, enrollment members of non-federally recognized tribes. And five, non-Indians. Section five, qualifications of attorneys. A, all attorneys will be alcohol and drug free and will comply with the terms of the tribe's drug free workplace act. B, all attorneys hired by the legal department will have a juris doctorate degree from an accredited law school and will be in good standing in at least one state in which they are licensed. A certificate, certificate of good standing shall be provided to the tribal council prior to any interview. C, additionally, the in-house attorney must comply with the following conditions. One. Obtain a license to practice in the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court before accepting the position to remain state and tribally licensed and in good standing during the term of the appointment. If the attorney is subject to discipline by his or her prospective state and our tribal bar association, the result is suspension or disbarment from practice of law. That attorney cannot serve the tribe during the period of suspension and will not be paid during that period of suspension. If disbarred, the attorney will be deemed terminated by operation of law. D, the attorneys will have a minimum of five years of legal experience, specialized in Indian law and must have demonstrate litigation experience. Section six, general requirements and duties of the attorneys. A, the attorney will work full-time for the legal department unless they are appointed on a temporary or part-time basis. They may work remotely. However, they are required to attend meetings as assigned to be in the office at least two other full working days each week. B, the attorneys cannot take on outside work unless the work was started before their appointment and they owe an ethical duty to close the case or cases at issue. C, the legal department will not handle tax matters, retirement plans, patent or trademark matters, insurance claims or other specialized areas of law that require the assistance of an outside expert unless the attorney possesses the requisite expertise. D, the, the attorneys will not represent or provide legal advice to the Tribal Gaming Commission or the Election Commission. E, the attorneys will not represent or provide any legal services to the tribal officer or council member for actions taken outside the scope of his or her official duties. F, the attorneys will not 
represent or provide legal services to any tribally chartered corporation or business. G, the attorneys will represent, not represent or provide any legal advice to any individual tribal member without authorization of the tribal council. H, the attorneys must notify both the office manager and the tribal council when a proposed assignment presents a time conflict or other conflict with that attorney's pre-existing workload. I, each attorney will serve two standing tribal council committees. If an attorney cannot attend a committee meeting, that attorney must so notify the committee chair, secretary, and office manager and arrange to obtain any assignments from the secretary along with any supporting documents and minutes. Section seven, will services to the members of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Oyate. A, the legal department shall provide general will services to Oglala Sioux Tribe Oyate. B, the legal department will host a will clinic in each district once a year. Section eight, assignment of work to legal department. A, legal work assignments, cases and emergencies will be limited to the in-house counsel when requesting legal assistance unless noticed from the legal department manager that the subject matter upon discussion with the in-house counsel would be best given to special counsel unless special counsel is assigned by tribal counsel. B, only the following entities may assign cases, legal work assignments, and emergencies to the legal department. One, OST president, two, OST tribal council, three, OST standing committees, and four, executive committee. C, all cases or work assignments and emergencies will be referred directly to the office manager who will notify the appropriate attorney. Section nine, annual funding for the Oglala State Tribal Legal Department A. The Tribal Council finds that in order to promote a stable legal department staffed with qualified individuals and because of the remoteness of the tribal offices and shortage of housing on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the personnel will be paid as follows. In-house counsel, up to 150,000 per year per attorney negotiable based upon experience. Office manager, paralegal, 70,000 per plus year per year plus fringe benefits. Legal secretary, 45,000 per year plus fringe benefits. File clerk receptionist, 30,000 per year plus fringe benefits. B, the office manager will submit an operating budget for the legal department to the finance committee annually. Section 10, agreements with outside law firms and attorneys. A, it is recognized that the tribal need to retain the specialized services of outside counsel to handle cases and other legal matters of the tribe. B, the in-house attorneys will be the preferred option for staffing of tribal council and standing committee meetings and drafting resolution and ordinances. C, the tribal council may confer with the in-house attorneys regarding workload capability abilities in the area of legal expertise regarding outside counsel before making an assignment to attorneys outside of the legal department but are not required to do so. Section 11, repeal and prior and consistent ordinances and resolutions. This ordinance rescinds and supersedes ordinance number 16-25 as amended and ordinance 20-56 in its entirety now. Therefore, be it ordained that this ordinance will become effective on the date it is approved by tribal council and therefore be it ordained that the president or in his absent, the vice president is hereby authorized to sign any necessary documentation on behalf of the tribe in order to carry out the terms of this ordinance. Motion. <laughs> okay, motion by Councilman Hawkins, second by Councilman Tapio. I had a question. Question. So, <laughs> that was a long ordinance. On section nine, it says, will services to the members of the tri Oglala Sioux Tribal Oyate. On B, it says the legal department will host a will clinic in each district once a year. Is this new or has it been existing? been existing do you know when they do you have a schedule of when they go out to the districts no um not yet they were doing it before covid and then when covid hit there was nobody going to the districts i think they only had they did um it was diane zephyr previously and she went to i think two or three districts and then covid hit 
Okay, also I have one more question on the section A, C. All cases or work assignments and emergencies will be referred directly to the office manager who notifies the appropriate attorney. How do they determine who's the appropriate attorney? The office manager knows what attorneys are uh, skilled in and what their experience is, so she'll know. And she'll she'll usually ask the attorneys to, so. That's all, thank you. Okay, Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Vote. Jim Minks? Yes. Car Whitehorse? Cora Whitehorse? Yes. Ryan Chumpenico Sr. Austin Watkins Sr. No. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Anna Halverson. No. Robert Tapio. Yes. Tyler Lenderman. David Puyer. Donor Gosper. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ha. Uh. Jackie Sears. Oha. Uh -huh. John Stale Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Fifteen yes, one no, one not voting. Motion passed. That's all we got, Chairman. But I want to thank Anna for reading that book. To her. <laughs> yes, thank you, Anna. Should we take a break? Okay, yeah. I I believe our next <clears throat> agenda items are the two thirds. Uh, go ahead, Councilor. Mr. Chair, I believe we're on, according to the agenda, we're on item 16. So I was going to motion to accept the president, OST president's office reports. I mean, if we're going verbatim on the agenda, aren't we on item 16? Because 14 says no agenda, 15 says no. And then the next item on the, um, Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, we we can take a 10, 15 minute break and then go into the two thirds or you want to jump right into it. Okay. So we'll take a little break here and and uh, we'll, we'll do a 10 minute break and then continue. Okay. Chair, just for clarification, we are finishing today, right? If we're finished today, we are going to finish today. Uh, we can discuss that. Yes. <laughs> Recording stopped.